Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum. So Allah Khan here and today with the next topic the properties of the ROC. Properties of the region of convergence. Fine. So the first number one is what? That the ROC of a Laplace transform consists of strips parallel to the G omega axis. Strips or it is a line parallel to the G omega axis and you know that very well the, the examples that we've seen from here till now you know that very well that uh, that I do what I draw a line that is parallel to the G omega axis and I shade some region like this maybe maybe to the other side but it is always parallel to the J omega axis right and and this is the property number one and why is that why is that because the Laplace transform the region of convergence only depends on real of s it only depends on real of s and it does not depend on the J omega axis fine so that is why it is on the real part so which is parallel to the so for any particular value of the real part that is parallel to the j omega axis that is number one number two for a rational laplace transform rational laplace transform if you have a, a laplace transform a of this shape x of s dy a is the numerator divided by a denominator the roc does not contain any poles what are poles? Poles are the roots of the denominator polynomial. So they do not contain any poles. Why? Because at poles, the Laplace transform would be in, at, 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 at pole, the Laplace transform would be infinite. The Laplace transform would not converge. So the pole cannot be that value for which the Laplace transform converges and region of convergence is that value for which the Laplace transform converges. So the, the pole cannot be included in the ROC. The number three, if x of t is a finite duration signal and it is absolutely integrable, its ROC is the entire S plane. We saw the impulse signal, the integration of which is a step signal. The ROC was the entire S plane. We know that from the example as well. If we if you want to see a general picture of it let's say we have a this is a general finite duration signal let's say x of t fine finding the Laplace transform what do we do we have x of s is negative infinity to positive but over here we would have it as from some particular limits let's say this is a negative t1 this is a positive t1 so i could replace these limits as well uh, and i would have x of t x exponential of negative st into dt or I could write them as an exponential of negative sigma t into exponential of negative j omega t with respect to t. So for what values of sigma, for what values of sigma would this Laplace transform converge? That's the question, right? So, so depending on exponential of negative st, uh, negative sigma t, I could either have sigma to be greater than zero or less than zero i could either have a decaying signal or a growing signal right so my if if sigma is positive so i have a decaying signal i have a decaying signal which means that this x of t to find the laplace transform would be multiplied with with this sort of a signal so have a look have a look and if I also draw the j omega plane over here. If you have a look, so this is converging. This is converging, approaching to zero. If you if you are confusing it that this to the left hand side, this is approaching infinity, but the product, the product is approaching zero. Outside this limit, the product is zero. Whether this approaches infinity, the signal is zero. So still the answer would be zero. So which means that this converges for a sigma value that is greater than zero. So which means this is included in the ROC of the plane, of the signal. 
right similarly the other possibility could be that if the value of sigma is less than zero so now if it is less than zero this would be a growing exponential and now this is a growing exponential so the shape would be like this which means again this signal is converging why because have a look oh, to the left side this is approaching zero by itself to the right side the, the growing exponential is approaching infinity but the product would be zero why because only t1 until t1 this both the signal and the exponential is finite so which means again for sigma less values less than zero also this is Converging, so which means this is also included in the ROC of this signal uh, Laplace alpha, so which means that this ROC consists of the entire S plane. That was property number three. We have an example on this, and this example is 9.6. This example is 9.6, where we where they have taken a finite duration signal example 9.6 finite duration signal x of t is let's say exponential of negative a t within the limits 0 to capital T and it's 0 otherwise now if you are asked to find the Laplace transform x of s for this so what could I do is what can I do? I can write, you know, x of s as negative infinity to 0. So I would write it as, uh, as 0 to capital T, right? x of t is exponential of negative a t, exponential of negative s t into dt. I can write as 0 to t, exponential of negative s plus a into t dt. Integration would give me a negative s plus a into t divided by negative s plus a the limits are 0 to t exponential negative s plus a into capital T minus exponential of this 0 more 1 negative s plus a the Laplace transform comes out to be x of s is equal to 1 minus exponential of negative s plus a into t divided by s plus a. Now, have a look. This is the Laplace transform for a finite duration signal. I said the ROC would be the entire s plane, which means for each and every value of s, the Laplace transform would exist. But you would have a question over here. What's the question? The question is, and if I put s equal to minus a, the Laplace transform would not convert. It would give me a zero by zero form. That's a valid question. That's a valid question. Minus a, zero. Minus a, exponential of zero, one. One minus one, zero. Zero by zero form. So for that, what do we have? We have the L'Hopital rule. L'Hopital. L, the spelling is something I don't know. L'Hopital rule. What do you do? You, in, you differentiate the numerator and denominator both with respect to the independent variable when you're getting a zero by zero form. So, what would I get? X of S, the differentiation of one zero. This I could write as minus exponential of minus s into t into exponential of uh, minus a into t, right? So this I am differentiating with respect to s. So this minus a t would be constant, right? Oh wait, I made a mistake. No problem exponential of minus a t would be constant and then the differentiation of exponential of minus s t would be what it would be minus of s t multiplied to a minus t would come down so this would be a minus t into exponential of minus s t right capital t yes and this is whole divided by so s uh, differentiation would be 1 plus 0. 
So what did I get? What did I get? This thing I got. Now if you put what? If you put uh, negative a. So x of s at s equal to minus a which was causing the problem. So this would be what? Uh, so this minus this minus would give you positive. So this is a t exponential of minus a t then exponential of s is minus a so then you have a minus and then minus again so plus a t so minus t into plus a t would give you a, a 1 so which means the the the, the, the plus transform is t and this is a finite value this is existing for any value of s that was a simple example property number 4 property number 4 so i will give this a speed while writing maybe okay Okay, so property number four, if x of t is a right sided signal and if the line real of s is equal to sigma naught is in the ROC, then all the values of s for which real of s is greater than s than sigma naught will also be in the ROC. You know this very well, let's say we remove the board to explain it. okay so <clears throat> now a right sided signal first of all what does a right sided signal mean so this means uh, that 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 it is zero from the negative infinity till some value let's say t and then it exists till the positive infinity so this is the meaning of a right sided signal and if the line real of s is equal to sigma naught so if this is the ROC of it of the Laplace transform this is this is let's say sigma naught this is in the ROC of it so if this is somewhere in the ROC of it so this means that anything for which real of s is greater than sigma naught would also be in the ROC. So which means if I consider any point over here sigma 1, so this would also be in the ROC of the signal and this is very clear to us. We know this very well. And by the way, what would happen? What would happen? So uh, if uh, you know you have a sigma naught, so for that the value is converging, right? the signal is converging this green represents sigma naught now if i have another value sigma one which is greater than sigma naught so the converging rate would be faster fine so again you would say that this is increasing to infinity at this side but over here the signal is zero at this side this is property number four property number five would be the exact opposite to this one property number 5 would be the exact opposite so I would write the things that are opposite if x of t is a left sided signal so if x of t is a left sided signal and if the real of line a real of s is equal to sigma naught is in the ROC then all the values of s for which real of s is less than sigma naught real of s less than sigma naught would also be in the roc of the signal so this is the exact opposite of that thing and now uh, let me tell you so if i draw it over here now a left sided signal means what that the signal was negative uh, was existing somewhere from negative infinity and it does not go to positive infinity and add somewhere at t so this is a left sided signal now for the roc if there is a line if there is a line sigma naught that is in the roc of this signal 
So now if you choose any other value, sigma 1, let's say that is less than the value of sigma naught. So that would also be in the ROC of the signal. And this is it. That's the signal. The proof, you can see the exact opposite. Not the proof, but the discussion. Anyways, from these two properties, we could also say that for a right-sided signal, the ROC is also right-sided. For a left-sided signal, the ROC is also left-handed. Please, write it down for yourself. For a right-handed signal, the ROC is right-handed. For a left-handed signal, ROC is left-handed. Or if I write it, if I write it for right handed signal, ROC is also right handed. For left handed signal, ROC is also left handed. Property number six if x of t is two-sided let me write it first okay if x of t is now a two-sided signal and the line real of s is equal to sigma naught is in the roc then the ROC will consist of a strip that includes the real, that includes this line. Now a two-sided signal is what? A two-sided signal is that signal which exists from negative infinity to positive infinity. Fine. And if you talk of the ROC, so if this is the sigma, this is J omega, so they are saying that if the ROC contains the value sigma naught contains the value sigma naught let's say somewhere here then it would consist of a strip and uh, what's a strip Incl enclosed by two boundaries so this would be the strip this would be the strip that includes the this would be the ROC that includes the line that is sigma naught let me show it by a line if you want isn't it like this it is this is represented by sigma left this is this is sigma l this is sigma r i'm going to tell you what are these is that fine till here basically what do you do is you you split your signal into two parts into a right sided part into a left sided part so for the right sided what do you have for the right sided you have the ROC is like this if this is your sigma R so this would be your ROC right similarly for your left handed signal if this is your sigma L so so this would be to the left hand side of it so have a look I told you that if a signal is a linear combination of two signals so the ROC would be the intersection of them so over here I have done what I have broken my two sided signal into a linear combination of a left sided and a right sided signal so the overall ROC would be the intersection which is the area between sigma R and sigma L we also have a condition on it what's the condition a two-sided signal that is infinite for both t less than zero and t, le t greater than zero of course sigma r less than sigma l that there is some overlap if this is not the case sigma r should be less than sigma l these are the poles right Sigma R is less than sigma L is the assumption for this. If this is not the case, then even the Laplace transform of the right sided and the left sided signal would exist individually, but the Laplace transform of the overall signal X of T would not exist. What did they say? That if this is not the case generally, if this is not the case that I mentioned over here. So, what would happen? That if the Laplace transform of the right sided signal also exists, the left sided signal also exists, 
but if the sigma r is not less than sigma l then we would not have any intersection and the laplace transform of the overall double sided signal would not exist fine two more properties simple ones okay property number seven if x of s is rational which means if the laplace transform is rational numerator by denominator form the roc is bounded by poles or it extends to infinity in addition no poles are contained in the roc what does this mean this means if you have laplace transform in rational form so the so there are two possibilities let's say these are the poles these are the poles so the first possibility i am mentioning is with the red color and that is that the roc is bounded by poles bounded by poles mean what you have a boundary at one side you have a boundary at the other side and the roc is in the middle of it this is for bounded by pole this could be one possibility if rational laplace transform the other possibility could be extends to infinity like this that it is to the right side of this pole or it's to the left side of the leftmost pole i write property number eight as well so then we would understand it in a better way okay so now uh, by studying this property together with the seven we would understand it in a better way what does it say if x of s is rational and if x of t was the right side so the roc is the region in the s plane right to the rightmost pole which means this one so it means this is bounded by a pole and this extending to infinity similarly if it's x of t is the left side region, so roc in the region in the s plane left to the leftmost pole so which is this the leftmost pole so the roc would be the to the left of this if two poles in this signal so the roc would be left for the left headed to the right for the right headed and if it's a double sided signal so this would be the case let me let me write over here let me write over here this portion is if the x of t was a right hand signal this portion is if x of t was a left handed signal this red portion is if it was a double sided signal for two poles similarly you can have three poles four poles but in that case if it's a double sided signal the roc would lie in between any two poles okay any two poles if you have three or four or multiple poles let's say if i have uh, you know an example if i have an example it's it's not a detailed example just just a little picture of it of what i have discussed over here so the point is if i am given a function x of s is 1 over s plus x of s i am given this laplace transform x of s is equal to 1 over s plus 1 into s plus 2 and i am asked to to tell about the possible roc i'm asked to find the possible rocs so what would i do i can consider my signal to be left handed i can consider my signal to be right handed i can consider my signal to be a double sided signal okay so what do we have poles first of all you need to calculate the poles so the poles are of course minus 1 and minus 2 so poles are minus 1 and minus 2 so what do you do like this you do it like this this is my j omega this is my sigma this is my minus 1 is one pole minus 2 is other pole. so i draw three graphs first oh the light is gone but we would you know uh, continue it because this is just a, a two minutes discussion left maybe 
maybe we are left only with two minutes discussion so i would just continue this because we cannot wait now anyways light goes at 12 but today it's gone at 11 so no problem no problem uh, it's it's fine the lightning is fine so now if uh, if my poles are negative 1 and negative 2 so the 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 roc uh, could be depending on the signal x of t but i don't have any information on x of t so what do i do i consider that if my x of t is a left sided signal so the roc would lie to the left of the leftmost pole and this is what it is it's the leftmost pole so the roc would lie to the left of it this is when when this is a left sided signal x of t is left sided similarly if i have now if my signal is a right sided signal so for the right sided signal the roc would lie to the right of the rightmost pole so which means this would be my second possible roc now if the x of t was a double sided signal so the roc would lie it would be bounded by the two poles and it would lie in between the two poles so which means this would be my possible roc now this is for a double sided x of t this is for a right sided x of t and that is it now if you're talking about three poles right if you have if you if you're confused in three poles if i have some say like this three pole what if the signal is x of t is a is a double sided signal so in between what two would it lie so that would depend on the mathematical calculation of course it could either be in between these two poles or it would be in between these two poles but of course it could not be in between the extreme two why because in the middle it would contain this pole then which it could not it could not contain this pole we, i have written over here no poles of x of s are contained in the roc which means if you have three poles so you could not and if x of t is the double sided signal so the roc could not be the extreme two poles why because then it would include the middle pole and that could not be included in the roc of the plane so that's it i believe that's quite uh, that was quite an interesting discussion on the properties of roc see you in the next lecture very soon inshallah with i don't know whatever the topic is till then take care of yourselves and everyone around you and do subscribe to the channel as well goodbye